Hello, everybody. Heather Lambert here, your star director. I am here with you tonight on our weekly team meeting on Zoom, and I have a few things to share with you this evening. Um, we're going to get right into it so we can get uh, through everything. I have an announcement to make at the end, so I'm super excited. Um, but we're going to start with transition. Today is August 16th, I believe. Um, so we're about halfway through the month of August, which is very exciting because everyone is looking forward to September 1st when the new fall catalog comes out and the harvest flyer is out. I'm going to see if you can get, oh, look at that. You can see me now. Um, the harvest flyer will be out. The um, Sensi Go will be available. Let's get a little bit more light. See my face. Okay. Um, so lots of cool things happening. So of course we have two more weeks though in August before September comes. And those two weeks, you can do a lot of stuff in two weeks, people. You could add team members to your team. You could have a ton of PRV. You could do so many things in the last two weeks of August. So. Sensi is predicting that August 31st will be the largest August 31st ever. It's the biggest transition month we have ever had. So get ready, right? What does that mean? It means don't wait till the end of the month. Um, there's going to be a lot of people placing their orders for all of the discontinued bars. There's going to be a lot of people stocking up on bars for the cheaper price while they are on sale at 10% before the price increase next month. There's going to be a lot of people placing orders last minute to get all the things before they are discontinued in the spring summer catalog. So do not wait till the end of the month. I promise you will be happier if you get your orders in earlier than later. But if you do have an order on the 31st, um, again, earlier is better than later. Don't wait till evening, don't wait till nighttime, especially if you are desperate to get your 200 in or you're trying to reach a promotion or something like that. You just never know if something will go wrong. Um, be patient in case the workstation gets bogged down. Our tech people have been really on the ball lately and things have been really good, but um, you just wanna be prepared. Be prepared for it to be a super busy day and if things happen, just be calm, be patient. Um, know that things might be slow, know that it's going to take a long time to get your orders in and just be prepared for that. Um, the other thing I like to remind people about the last couple of weeks of August is um, shipping expectations. So make sure that you are setting expectations for your customers that are realistic at this time of year. Um, so sometimes so since he spoils us, our shipping department, they guarantee that our orders will be out of the warehouse in 10 business days. It does not include Saturday and Sunday or holidays. So business days, it will leave the warehouse. Now that does not count how many days it takes UPS to get it from the warehouse to your house. So know that that is Sensi's guarantee that 10 business days it will leave Sensi's warehouse. Um, and so you've got to make sure that your customers know that that they can expect a two to three week wait for their order. I always tell everybody two to three weeks, no matter what. You under promise, over deliver every time. So if I tell my customer that it might take two to three weeks and it comes in four days, they are so happy with me. They are surprised, they're excited, they can't wait, oh my gosh. But if I tell them that it's gonna take one week to get their order and it shows up eight, nine, 10 days later, they're going to be mad. They're going to be annoyed. They're going to not want to do that again. And um, so don't set yourself up for that. Especially at the end of a transition month, it is going to take longer for them to fill those orders, especially the ones that come the last couple of days of the month. Um, they're going to move just as fast as they can and they're going to have all hands on deck, but it could take longer because there's going to be a lot of people ordering a lot of stuff. So it could take longer for your orders. It's still gonna be within the 10 days since he guarantees that, and they are really good about sticking to that. But it could take the full 10 business days. So be prepared and make sure your customers are prepared. Um, 
the other thing is if you order on September 1st or 2nd or 3rd or 4th. So this is another shipping expectation issue. Um, we, again, are so, so spoiled about getting our stuff so quickly, but when they are transitioning from spring, summer to fall, winter, um, things can get bogged down a bit because there are so many orders. Just imagine that each order that goes through the workstation from all the hundreds of thousands of consultants around the world, at the same time, everybody's ordering, right? On the 1st of September, everybody will be ordering their Cincy Goes and their new stuff. And um, so they have to fill all of the August orders first, empty the shelves of the discontinued items, fill the shelves with the new items, and then fill the orders from September 1st, right? And how many people are gonna be up super early on September 1st waiting for the workstation to come up so they can place their orders for their goes, all their pre-order goes and all the things that are happening. Um, so be prepared if you order the first week of September that your order is gonna take a little bit. It's gonna take that full 10 day business days. So just be prepared and set expectations. Under promise, over deliver every time. Um, Make sure you've got all your supplies ready. So you've got two more weeks, there's still time, but you wanna make sure that you have your new testers for your fall catalog. You have your new catalogs um, for September 1st. You also could, uh, can buy now your harvest flyers. So there's a pack of harvest flyers in the workstation, you, um, Cincy Family Store you can order, um, that has all the Halloween and fall items in it. Those are available to purchase. They will go on sale on September 1st with the fall catalog. Um, and then in September, September 15th, I believe you can order the winter holiday flyer that will go on sale on October 1st. So make sure you have all the things that you need so that you can hit the ground running on September 1st for your customers and they can see all of the new things ASAP. You don't wanna wait because that's money that you're wasting, right, if you wait. So, so many things happening. So make sure you have your supplies. You're gonna have to sit down and trade out your testers. Um, the other thing is make it a goal. I don't know how many of you have see this little pile over here. I guess you um, but I have a little pile over here of catalogs. Spring summer catalogs, right? So it is my goal in the next two weeks to rid myself of everything discontinuing. That means these spring summer catalogs need to get out of my house. I don't wanna waste money. So I'm going to get them into people's hands. I don't care that the stuff's going away. One, they need to see the stuff that's on sale. Two, even if it's discontinuing, they're gonna have my information and they'll be able to contact me to get a new one. If for some reason, I get to the end of the month and I still have some catalogs, I'm gonna write on here, contact me for a current catalog. Contact me for the new fall winter catalog. Um, and I'm gonna use them as my little free business, they're not free anymore, but because I bought them, but they're business cards, they're your information, they're amazing photos, people can get hooked on them very quickly. So don't just throw them away if you get to the end of the month and you still have a few left. Use them, throw them out into the world, you never know what might come back. You guys have not heard the story, but we are all here on this team because of a discontinued catalog in a um, medical office. I don't know if it's a dentist or a doctor. Melanie can share that with us. Um, but she, somebody left one in, in a waiting area in an office and the person picked it up and decided to call and they joined and somebody else joined and somebody else joined and then voila. Here we are. So um, those people are not around anymore, but it led us to Cincy. So thank goodness somebody left a discontinued catalog in a waiting room. So do not throw them out. Okay, so that's transition. Fall's coming, but do not waste your two weeks of August. Push, push, push all the way to the end. Take advantage of these last two weeks. Take advantage of our sale. Take advantage of the join kit, the diffuser enhanced kit. Um, take advantage of the opportunity that the price increase gives you for your old customers to stock up while the cents are cheap um, before the price goes up. Use that as an opportunity to get paid now instead of later. Um, they will buy stuff from the new catalog because it's new and because it's the season. Um, so don't worry about like missing out on sales later. 
get sales now. Those will happen whether you get sales now or not. So take advantage and use the opportunities that he's given us um, with all of these promotions this month to increase your sales early in incentive trip period. So August is the first month and I guarantee that if you are short by like a thousand points at the end of January, you're gonna be really sad you didn't do more in August. So push, push, push all the way to the end. Do everything you can. Don't quit until it's over. Um, and just work really hard. You'll be you'll be happy that you did when you get your pay. Okay, so trying to decide what I want to talk about next. Um, so I had a I had a conversation um, with a consultant and this kind of thing pops up. It's actually popped up twice in the last week um, and it comes up quite often and it's all about um, selling at work. So a lot of consultants work either full or part-time job and sometimes when we reach out to contact people that are struggling or need to get their 200 because they're um, getting ready to go inactive, um, or they've been active so they're going to get canceled we reach out and they always say well I can't you know nobody wants to buy anything and I can't sell at work and I'm at work all day and so I can't do it <laughs> so I just want to remind you that if you want to work this business if you want to make money at this business and you want this business to succeed it will and if you make excuses and just decide that the um, obstacles that you think you are facing um, are unovercomable, <laughs> um, if you just think that those are big, huge walls and there's no way you can get over, um, then you will not succeed. It just won't happen. So you have to decide, are these challenges that I'm going to overcome and figure out? how to get around the wall or over the wall, or am I gonna break right through the wall, or am I just gonna say, oh, there's a big wall in front of me and it's too much work to try to get on the other side of it, so I'm just gonna stop and not, and blame the wall instead of myself and whether or not I choose to um, break it down. So if you have a job where they frown upon solicitation, or selling at work and you can't sell at work and you can't, well, that's fine. You don't have to sell at work. I encourage you not to sell at work. Um, I've had two jobs throughout my Sensi career besides Sensi while I was doing Sensi and I didn't want to be selling at work either. I'm there to do my job at work. Um, however, it does not mean that you can't use your job to network your business. So let me tell you how. Um, so you're not gonna bring product and you're not going to go up to people and say, do you wanna buy some Sensi? Do you wanna host a party? Do you wanna join my team? That's not the kind of conversations you're gonna have at work. It's just not, it's not cool. It's very salesy, it's very, people don't like it. So don't do that. But what you can do is get to know people, build relationships with people, get to know them and let them get to know you. So. A work, a job, a traditional job that you have besides Sensi is a great opportunity to network and to grow your network of people and contacts and friends in your life. So we always start our business with our friends and family. We always start with people that we know, um, that we have a relationship with, people that can trust us, people who know us. And so you use your time at work whether it's your lunch break or your break break or while you're working, whatever it is, depending on your job, to get to know the people at your work. Get to know them, let them get to know you, be friendly. Maybe you become Facebook friends. Imagine that, you build a relationship with someone who you have something in common with, common being your workplace, and so you friend each other on Facebook. Guess what happens when they friend you on Facebook? They start to see the rest of your life outside of your workplace, which is Sensi. They see you, you know, talking about your business. They see you talking about trips. They see you talking about, you know, different things that are going on. 
and they are curious and maybe they ask you about it. You're not soliciting, you're not selling at work, but you have met someone, you've built a relationship, you have a new friend, you have a new contact, who now you can contact outside of work. Maybe they message you on Facebook and say, what is this that you do? And you say, well, let's, you know, let's go have drinks after work one day and I'll tell you about it. So you don't have to solicit at work. Just because your workplace um, does not like you selling at work, I don't want you to sell at work. I don't want you to be soliciting all your coworkers. That's just not cool. But you can get to know them. Build relationships. Remember, this is a relationship business designed as a fragrance company. And so it's all about making and building relationships with as many people as you possibly can. And if you have a job other than Cincy, you are lucky because you have access to different people that are not your family and your like immediate friend group. And those people know people. Everybody knows at least two to 250 people. So every person at your workplace knows 200 people. Hello, that's a lot of contacts. All you gotta do is get to know them, get, build a relationship, get to know, like, and trust, so they like, know, like, and trust you. And now you're sharing your life outside of work. They find out you have a business, perhaps they're interested, they host a party, introduce you to all their friends. And all of a sudden, you have this amazing customer base, maybe some new hosts, some new recruits, you just never know. So <clears throat> use your jobs to build relationships and to network and to meet your people, to grow your circle of people in your life. And if you're authentic and you truly um, care about getting to know those people, then the business part will come. So that's my second thing I want to talk to you about tonight. I hope that helps. Hope it gives you some thoughts and ideas about how to approach your business at work. Um, thank you for the consultant we had that conversation with. She's doing a great job about it, by the way. It just came to my attention and I, I get that question or that excuse thrown at me a lot when I talk to people about, you know, how's business going and, um, well, I can't do business because they won't let me sell at work and I can't and nobody wants to. Um, it's, it's a mindset. It's a decision that you have to make. Do you want to make this work or don't you? And if you do, then you find ways to make it work. That's it. Um, this business is, it will pay you based on how hard you're working. What you want to put into it is what you're going to get out of it. I mean, it's all very cliche, but it's absolutely true. If you work this business like a business, it will pay you like a business pays you. And if you pretend it's a hobby and you let excuses um, prevent you from doing what you're, what's possible, then it won't pay you and it'll just be something for you to do. So you have to decide what you want out of this business. And if you want money, if you want bigger paychecks, then you have to work like a job. You have to think about it like a job. It is a job. Now, how many times I see Sensi consultants posting on Facebook that they need to find a job, a part time, I need a part time job. You have a part time job, you need another one. If you were working part time hours at your Sensi job, you wouldn't need another part time job. I'm just saying. Um, all right. The last thing I'm going to talk about tonight is personal branding. Um, there's been a lot of talk about personal branding lately. Uh, there's been some Discover Your AHA Moment trainings. I love that group. You guys have got to go watch those videos. Um, Melissa Gratz talks about it a lot. Um, who else? Jilly Sue talks about it a ton. There was a booth at the Expo at Reunion. So I've seen a lot about personal branding over the years. And um, personal branding is different than Sensi branding. So if you are branding Sensi on everything, that is you marketing Sensi, right? And that's great and fine if somebody loves Sensi and knows what it's all about, but um, there are lots of other consultants marketing Sensi too. So how does somebody choose between you and somebody else? How do they remember you? How do they um, set you apart from some any other random Sensi consultant? Why do they come to you instead of just going to Sensi.com? 
how do they remember your website instead of Scentsy.com, if that's what they're looking for. So that's, that's where personal branding comes in. Personal branding is you marketing you. It's what, what people will remember about you. It's how they will remember you. It's um, the style or colors or slogan or um, your face, your name, um, some image or some object that is always associated with you because it's your personality and it's just the way you live your life. Um, that is your personal branding. And when you start using your personal branding to market your business, now you set yourself apart from all the other consultants. So I had somebody tell me today that um, they were struggling with their business because there's so many other consultants selling. I don't care how many consultants are selling. I could have 20 consultants on my street and I will still be more successful than them. Why? Because I'm going to market me. We're not all marketing Sensi, we're all marketing each other ourselves. And if I market me, then the people that like me best are gonna buy from me. It doesn't matter how many other people are selling. They're gonna associate with me, they're going to like me, they're gonna remember me because of my personal branding. Um, if we're all just doing Sensi, then they don't know who they're selling, who they're buying from, or who they're checking out because it's just Sensi. So what? But if I market me, and the things that are special about me and memorable about me, then they will remember me and they will buy from me, right? So think about your personal branding and how you're putting yourself and your business out there in the world. Um, how are you marketing? So I've been doing a lot of thinking about this lately and um, I've decided to make some big changes. Um, so, when I originally chose, um, when you become a director, one of the big things is to choose your team name, right? And it is hard. You'd think it'd be easy, no big deal, but it is so hard. And I know that Joelle and Nicole can tell you this, it is a hard thing to pick your team name. It's so hard, it took Nicole like two years, I think, to do it. Um, it is a hard thing. And, because you have to make sure it's not taken already, right? You want it to mean something to you. Um, so I struggled with what to do and I finally chose Proud to Party. Um, me and Dave were driving one day and I was just playing with words and trying to, I like alliteration, I like them to um, roll off the tongue a little bit, you know, and so Proud to Party, P2P, um, and it had meaning for me. It, it, you know, you were supposed to be proud of your business. And, and sometimes we get people that are like looked down on direct sales and, oh, you're just trying to sell me something. So um, I wanted people to be proud that they partied for a living, that this was our business, a home party based business. And we were doing that. And I wanted you to be proud of it. So proud to party made sense. Um, but over the years, I've never really connected with it. And, um, and I don't think the team has either. It's not something that we even say very often. Unless somebody asks me my team name, I rarely say proud to party. Um, and I don't hear you guys saying that. And I, you know, I, so it's not something that we've really connected or um, has helped our culture in any way. So I've, I've thought about that over the last few years actually, about, well, if I was gonna change it, what would it be? And I hear other directors, especially when you go to reunion and you hear all these um, Shining Star nominees and everything, and they're the director of team so-and-so and teams whatever, whatever, and they're so inspirational and they're so pretty and um, I'm like, oh, that's so cute. And um, what's her name? Last year's Shining Star winner, her team is Purple Cows or something. Like, that's just cool. And you remember, I remember that because it's unique and it's special to her for whatever reason. And um, people get behind that, right? So I wanted something that you guys could get behind. I wanted something that could, I could be proud to share out and to use to market me and my team and our little group here and something that people could connect with and want to be a part of. Um, something that was attractive to be a part of it. It sounded cool and fun and happy and I want to be a part of that too. So I'm changing our team name. 
I've already submitted, so I'm hoping that it will be approved and everything will be fine. I'm changing all of my marketing. I'm not changing it. I'm going to get rid of all the old stuff before I use the new stuff, but I'm not throwing it out, but I am going to slowly transform over into our new team, Smiles and Scents. Team Smiles and Scents. Because why? Because it it is an alliteration, and I like that. Um, it has sense in it because we are smelling up the world and that's what we do. We're a fragrance company. So we are sharing scents with everybody and I want you to share scents with everybody. But I also want you to share smiles. I want you to have fun in your business. I want you to smile at people. A smile is a powerful thing. If you are anywhere in your town or out and about and you smile at people, you are much more likely to get a smile back and have a conversation with that person. So smiles and scents, um, I like it. I kind of like it. And I, I have always had people tell me that I had a great smile. And um, in pictures, they're like, oh, you have such a great smile. You're so photogenic. And my husband tells me all the time to smile. And he loves to smile. And so I guess a smile is sort of associated with me. Um, I posted on Facebook a few days ago. I think you saw that. Um, if, when you think of me, what do you think of? And it was all happiness and smiles and sunshine. And, just so you know, I'm not always happy. I'm not always smiling. Um, but when I put my Scentsy hat on to go to work and I'm uh, interacting with customers and hostesses and team members, I'm smiling because that's important because they deserve it and because it makes me feel better because smiling makes you feel better. So I want you all to be smiling and I want you to share smiles and scents with everybody that you meet and I want you to smile whenever you're doing your Scentsy business because um, it is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to do cool things in your life and that should make you smile. Thinking about your goals and your whys should make you smile. Thinking about making them absolutely true, making all your wildest dreams come true, that should make you smile. Thinking about going on a trip should make you smile. Going to California with your kids, Disney World, Disneyland, that should make you smile, right? Scentsy makes people happy. When I give Scentsy to people, when I bring Scentsy around and they start sniffing, it makes them happy. And that makes me smile. So smiles and scents, team smiles and scents. We are spreading happiness and joy, making people smile with scent um, all over the world. And so we are going to be team smiles and scents. And I am going to um, start using that, I hope. Um, in a lot of our marketing and on our page and um, just in general. So it's going to be a part of my personal branding because this is my team, my group, and I'm your, you know, happy leader. Um, so it's going to be my personal um, branding that I'm going to use in my business as well. So it kind of carries through, which I like because I want people to be a part of it. I want to meet somebody I've never met before and let them get to know that I am delivering smiles and scents. And then if they really like that, then they can deliver smiles and scents too by being a part of our team of smiles and scents. So, um, so you will start to see that um, more and more. If there's anybody out there who's artistic, I would love like a little team logo or something. I haven't decided what I want that to look like, um, but I certainly want to um, mark it with my face. So, I have to find myself a good picture of smiles. Um, so anyway, I want you to think about your personal branding. Think about um, how people are going to remember you and what you can use to set yourself apart from all the other sensory consultants in the world. Um, so people will remember you. Um, and when you're director one day, perhaps you can turn it into a slogan that becomes your team and people will want to be a part of it because they'll think of you when they think of it. So that's my big news. Um, it's getting late. I hear my kiddo is not sleeping, so I need to go tend to him. Um, he has early school in the morning. But I hope everybody's having a great week and a, a great month. We're off to a solid start, um, but let's finish it strong. Remember the two weeks in August, all the way to the end. Take advantage of all the promotions we've got going on. Um, if you have questions, please don't reach out. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out. You've got to connect. We don't know what we don't know. And if I don't know that you're struggling or need some help, then 
I don't know it. You've got to tell me. There's way too many people in this group for me to be able to connect with every single person every single week or every single month. It's just not going to happen. I've got my own business to run, people. I'm trying to build something over here. And so if you need something, you really need to reach out um, to your sponsor, to other team members, to our group, to whatever, upline, sideways line, downline, whatever. If you need something, you got to reach out. Connect with Sensi. Go on YouTube. Um, the training center is so full. The Sensi Consultant page on Facebook has amazing. Jason Harwood's been on there constantly with trainings and information. Um, the training center, the YouTube, like there's so much training out there, you guys. It's not even funny. Like seriously, there's so much. Um, anything that you want to find, it is out there. And if you need help with something, please connect yourself with what will help you, whatever that is. Um, Hope you guys all have a great night and we will see you next week.